to get started, I wanted to give you an idea of what our stunning campus looks like. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to play a very short video for you. I hope you can hear it. And this really idea of what best. So that video gives you a good sense of both where we've come from, but also a great way to sum up some of our history. Another way of doing that is to tell you that Trinity currently has 18 subjects ranked in the top 100 worldwide. So that's a really great achievement. And those subjects cover all of our three faculties. So um, arts and humanities, uh, health sciences, but also what I'm going to focus on today, which is the faculty of STEM. It's focused on science, engineering, and maths. So Trinity Scientific Community is actually very busy and actually very active. Uh, this hopefully will give you an idea of some of the different activities that they are involved in. Um, some work in labs, some work with animals, uh, some work out in the field, and some work on research on Trinity campus site. So you can see it's really quite broad. Um, and basically what that gives us is a great sense of community and reliance on each other because we understand that working in science does not mean working alone. Working in science means working part of a team and relying on the people around you to make sure that the science you're doing is accurate, reliable. It's um, you know, going to help the, uh, one of the world's problems in some way. And to do that, you really need a great sense of community and a great team around you. So as I said, we have a really long tradition of scientific excellence, and we do have a very proud history of research-led teaching. And two of our most famous graduates are firstly, Ernest Walton, who you'll have seen in the video, and he won the Nobel Prize in 1951 for helping to split the atom with John Cockcroft, which is considered a really significant breakthrough in the world of physics. He was also a Trinity student, and then went on become, to become a professor of physics. Um, and he really loved working with students and really enjoyed uh, the teaching aspect of the role. And he's a great example of how science and um, it really embodies research-led teaching. So bringing uh, active research in the world into the classroom so the students can benefit from it. Most recently, we um, actually uh, were delighted to hear in 2015 that we also had a graduate winning the Nobel Prize in Physiology or Medicine. So Professor Will, or Bill Campbell, as he's known as, dedicated his life to work against what's called river blindness, which was a really significant problem, especially in the third world. And um, it was an infection based on roundworm parasites. And he worked um, for much of his career focusing on that problem and focusing to develop something that could really uh, um, uh, tackle that river blindness. So in 2015, he was awarded with the Nobel Prize um, and we were delighted for him. So what do they do today? So that's what scientists have done, but what, what, what's going on right now? So the first example I wanted to talk about really quickly is Professor Valeria Nicolosi, um, who's very active in the School of Chemistry. She's one of the world's most highly cited researchers, which is a way of putting together the impact that scientists have had over the last year and basically understanding whose papers or whose discoveries are most used and most read about 
to inform future work. And Valeria Nicolosi is one of those people. She's um, really focused on energy, uh, specifically on battery research. And she um, and her team are working on coming up with other alternatives um, to the batteries that we, we know and use every day in our smartphones, in our watches, um, in, in, in our laptops and whatever. And those batteries rely on what are called precious metals. And precious metals mean that there's actually not that much of them. So we need to figure out other ways to use and store energy. And that's what her team are focused on. So everything from the smartwatch that you have in your hand, or if you want to get into all of the smart wearable research is just one of the applications of her, of her research. But you can see actually, if we can crack the energy storage problem, you can see it will go far beyond uh, smart wearables. So this is an example of somebody who's really working at a very interdisciplinary level, even though she's based in the School of Chemistry. Another example is Professor Stephen Dooley, who's based in the School of Physics, and his research focuses on sustainable plant-based fuels for aviation. And what that means is that, again, he understands that we only have a finite amount of, of resources that we can consume to turn into fuels. So oil is an example of one, gas is an example of other. And he understands that we've only got a limited amount of those, so we need to look at other options. And he's doing that by looking at biomass fuels. Um, and you can see some of, the, some of the things he's currently working on there on the screen. But he is part of a team that joined with Ryanair last year. Uh, Ryanair is, is one of our national airlines. And you can, they are tackling several problems within the aviation industry, not just fuel. So by using plant-based fuels, um, it has been proven that pollution levels from planes are reduced. But more importantly, not just pollution, noise pollution as well. So for many reasons, it makes sense to be looking at these kind of alternatives. And because of that, Professor Dooley has been awarded a European Research Council grant, which is a very prestigious award in the field of science. Um, and that really shows how important his work is in the area. The final example I wanted to give you is Professor Isabel Rosas. She's one of our medicinal chemists here at Trinity College. And just to show you what scientists are doing and how quickly they're reacting to other problems going on in the world, Isabel is really, um, she works in antivirals, it's called. So what she's doing at the minute is she's investigating a very simple mechanism, but actually it's quite a tricky problem. So everyone has been affected by SARS and by COVID. And um, unfortunately, we all know somebody who has suffered from the disease or is currently suffering from it. And Isabel works on a very simple mechanism blocking the SARS virus from binding to one of our cells in a respiratory system. So for the virus to be active, it has to latch on. If she can prevent it from latching, then it cannot make us sick. So Isabel is working on that area. But to show you that also chemistry goes beyond just working in the lab and trying to solve a problem, Isabel has also partnered with an economist and has written a book specifically on the impact of viruses, vaccines and antivirals and the role that politics play in it, which shows that she actually works beyond chemistry. And this is an example of how scientists have responded to um, this pandemic and working beyond boundaries that they would normally work in. So Isabel is a great example of that, which is why I wanted to show you um, uh, some of her work today. But let's just talk about chemistry and physics at Trinity. So first of all, let's start with undergraduate chemical sciences and physical sciences, which are the two um, intakes that we have for undergraduates who want to study chemistry and physics at Trinity. So if you study uh, TRO 61, it's called chemical sciences, you uh, study general chemistry with, uh, with maths in the first two years, and you can choose your third subject. So it could be physics, geology, biology, whatever you want to do. And at the end of second year, you choose then to, um, to specialize in one of our five options. And you can see the five options on the screen. And really the difference between the five uh, moderatorships is something I just want to talk about for a second because not many people understand it. And that's fine. That's, 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 that's actually uh, a really, really good start. So um, chemistry itself is the study of matter. 
So it's the study of how, uh, how matter interacts with the world around us. So if you choose chemistry, you're focusing on learning how, for example, you can see in this picture in the, in the top left, how different things light up with different colors. What is the chemical reason and the scientific reason for those changes in colors? So if you study chemistry, that is, that is something that you would learn. If you studied medicinal chemistry, you would focus on learning how to design effective drugs, okay? So um, how to make a drug safer, how to make it less toxic, how to make it cheaper, how to make it quicker to, to process, to manufacture. These are some of the areas medicinal chemists look at. And I'm just gonna jump to, study, uh, to talking about chemistry with molecular modeling because it kind of goes hand in hand. So for example, say, I was told I had to make a drug more, um, more uh, efficient or less toxic. And say I had a hundred possible examples of how I might do that. It wouldn't make financial sense for me to actually work through all of those hundred examples. And I could be under time pressure. So maybe I wouldn't have the time or the resources to do that. So what I would do is I would go with the chemistry to a, a molecular modelist. So I would go to one of those and I would say, okay, these are the hundred best examples I can come up with. What five or what, what 10 should I target? So what would happen is they would model the best outcomes from those, from those options and they would shortlist them for me and tell me, okay, need, these are your best options. So that's something that chemistry and molecular modeling do. Of course, they work with chemists as well. They help them to model materials, all of those things, but they really specialize in that computational modeling aspect and learn how to work in partnership with, with the other scientists. So they're really important. Nanoscience is um, a really interesting area. So you heard me talk about Valeria Nicolosi's research about how you know, materials can be transformative if we know more about them. And the nanoscience degree really, really focuses in on that element. It partners some chemistry with physics to really understand how to make the materials more efficient and how to look at that small nano scale and really understand what's going on. Then like the last example, which is the one I want to talk about, um, comes from chemical biology. So it's our chemistry with biosciences degree. And this is our latest degree. So we've only added this in the last couple of years. And this was really um, summed up by the fact in 2018, the Nobel Prize in Chemistry actually went to chemical biology. And about that time, we could see that quite a lot of research and quite a lot of expertise was building up both around the world and within Trinity in this area. And we responded by putting together this chemical biology degree. And that really is trying to understand what's happening um, at the, the boundary between chemistry and biology. So understanding why biofuels work the way they do, why medicines interact in certain ways within, within the body, and why, for example, you can walk into a supermarket to get detergent or, or, um, or, or any one of those popular laundry brands, and they have bioactive or non-bio written on it. So chemists with, with biology experience understand how to work at that boundary. And to do that, they focus on things like DNA, on enzymes. They work on a lot of cancer research, all of those things. So it's a massive field. And because of that, our chemistry with biosciences degree is really focusing on those elements. If you're interested in going down the other direction, which is physical sciences, you're interested in focusing on physics, physics with astrophysics or nanoscience when you get to third year. Now, I already talked about nanoscience because it's a shared degree between the two schools, schools of physics and school of chemistry. It's 50-50. But if you want to focus on physics, for example, you're really focusing in on understanding how measurements um, uh, of different, different areas really help us to understand what is going on. So if the chemists are making the materials, the physicists are focused on measuring them and understanding how they react the way they do. And they do that through things like optical science, quantum physics, and uh, many, many different areas. But that's, that's the area that the physicists focus on. If you're interested in physics with astrophysics, you're still interested in physics, but you're also focused on understanding how the sun, the moon, the stars, and all of the, all of the world uh, outside of our universe 
uh, it works. And to do that, we have a, a team of extraordinary astrophysicists who are really focused on solving a lot of the world's problems, such as telecommunications with, with different satellites around the world, um, an area called exoplanets is another big area of research, solar flares, understanding how they work, all these different areas. And that is something that you would learn more about if you were doing our physics with astrophysics degree. What the two, um, what chemistry and physics degrees have in common is that they have um, very similar activities, which is, which is a, a great thing. So not only have you lectures, if you study chemistry or physics with um, a really great group of fellow students who are interested about learning how the world works, but you also have an opportunity for, um, for laboratory activities. As you can see, teaching laboratories is, is a big area of work. Um, individual and team research is something that we embed in all of our students' programs from, from the beginning. And learning how to uh, research is actually very important to us. And part of that um, is giving our students the opportunity to present their research to faculty and explain to them exactly what they think is going on with, with one of the problems that they focused on. So uh, that's also ingrained in our work. That element of science communication is really important. And then finally, I'm going to talk about the opportunity that you get in the fourth year of your degree, the final year of your degree, to focus in on individual research. And this is something that um, our degrees have in common. This element of novel research that's never been done before. Um, and this shows you what working in research really is about. So you get an opportunity to work with one of our teams on an area that inspires you. And hopefully that will inform you whether you want to become a chemist or a physicist or a researcher of any kind after you graduate. Now you can do the project in Trinity with one of our amazing teams. But in addition, we also have partnerships with, uh, with different universities and research institutions all over the world. So you can see from this slide, um, Jerry went to Rice University in, Tex in Texas. Um, Annie went to Washington as part of her fourth year chemistry uh, research project. Robert on the top there was based in Chile at one of the largest uh, telescopes in the world to do his astrophysics project. And down the bottom, you can see a great group of, uh, of students at Suzhou University, one of our Chinese partners, where two of our students went, they're in there somewhere, trust me, um, to, to work on their, on their fourth year nanoscience project. So you can see it's really quite broad and we really uh, value the opportunity that our students get to do that international element. So I'm just very quickly going to talk about the postgrad opportunities that we have at Trinity. And to do that, I want to start by talking about what's called the energy consumption problem. So I talked about it a little bit before in terms of Professor Nicolosi's battery research but also uh, Professor Stephen Dooley's um, uh, aviation research into, into different fuel opportunities. And I want to tell you how we've responded um, uh, in terms of our education to, to some of those problems. So this is an idea of how energy consumption looked um, in 2010. So this is 12 years ago now, okay? And you can see that we were mostly focused on oil, on natural gas, and on coal. So they made up a major part of energy consumption worldwide. Okay. In 2019, so this is just two and a half years ago, you can see that the picture really hasn't changed, which is really disappointing. So despite all the targets that we're setting ourselves internationally, we clearly need to do a lot more to both reduce our dependency on fossil fuels, but also to figure out how we can switch to more renewable energies. At Trinity, we've responded to that, saying, okay, we also need to be doing more to work in that space. And how we've responded is we've looked at this to create our master's in energy science, okay? And this program understands that we cannot tackle the problem ourselves, okay? So this program has pulled together experts from different schools, so chemistry, physics, engineering, natural science, and what we've done is we've said, OK, none of us can actually solve this problem ourselves. But what we can do is we can train students to understand the problems in energy from different perspectives. And by doing that, give them a greater opportunity to be able to solve the problems that we need them to solve. 
So we're training students to speak to scientists because they understand the language, having done this program of working between the different teams, to speak with politicians, other policymakers, and um, funders, many, many different areas, because we understand that not one area is responsible for contributing to a change in energy science. And this program is extremely popular. So you can see that since we started it in 2018, 94% of our students have found employment in the energy industry. And that this statistic was up until September 2021. So you can see this is a really recent statistic. And the kind of jobs they've gone on to is, you can see Selena has become a graduate asset optimizer in the UK. Vishnu um, was actually really lucky to be involved in an internship that took him to the Secretary of the United Nations in, in Germany. So you can see he's going directly to one of the sources of, of those that make those policies that I talked about in terms of, of energy science. And you can see Robert um, has a state in Ireland, but he's gone into actually energy trading. So this is one of the areas he works in. And this is just a very small representation of all of the different careers that our students have ended up in. And this tells us that this degree is extremely effective um, at training students to work across different areas. And that's really important because it shows us that this area is something that we should be focusing on. And to give you an idea of how, uh, how close Trinity is to really like massive multinational companies, what I wanted to do was give you a, an idea of how closely we're situated to those. So you can see that not only are we training students to work in different fields, but you can see that many of the most significant employers across many, many areas are within a stone's throw of the campus. And that really shows us that they are interested in being close to our graduates and they're interested in working with Trinity um, to create entrepreneurs and people who can work across these different industries. So you can see this is just an idea of, of, of kind of areas they work in. Now, speaking of tech, another program that we launched actually only in September 2021 was our Master's in Quantum Science and Technology. Okay, now everybody uh, is going to say, what is quantum science exactly? And I can tell you that I'm going to explain it probably not as well as the quantum scientists as well. But what this program does is it draws together expertise across quantum science, theory, technology, all of these areas to give a program to our students that actually is very closely connected with industry. So as you can see, the program only started in, in September, but already we've had an incredible list of partners who've worked with us during semester one. And part of that uh, partnership is is actually delivering uh, seminars and working with our students on problems that exist in, within the industry and where research in that area, in these areas is focused on at the moment. So some of those partners have been Microsoft and uh, Microsoft Ireland has been a phenomenal supporter of the program and they understand how important it is to, to, to meet the needs of the quantum industry. We've also worked with some another Irish uh, based center called iCheck, which is the Irish Center for Higher Performance Computing. But we've also worked with some partners overseas. So Riverlane is based in the UK and Xanadu is based in the UK. We've had a great list of uh, academic guest speakers as well, which shows you that we're, we're working with both industry, but also really um, keeping an eye on what's going on within academia so that our students get the best rounded experience of what's currently happening in the sector. And if you want to hear more about what our students have to say, you can go to our website, physics forward slash quantum tech. And we have a couple of videos up there and it really gives you a sense of, um, of where the students have come from and why they chose the program and what they're learning within the program itself. So now, um, just before I wrap up, I'm gonna focus just a little bit on the entry requirements and the kind of, uh, things that you will need if you're interested in studying at Trinity College, but specifically if you're interested in studying chemistry or physics. So um, if you're interested in coming through our International Foundation Programme, um, you can see that you'll need a pass, a 85% pass in high school diploma, and you'll also need scores within English, and they're written up here. And it, it, our International Foundation Programme is specifically for those students 
who have finished high school but maybe don't meet the entry requirements to go directly into one of our undergraduate bachelor's degrees. And to do so, we've had this one year program available to students from all over the world that helps them to bridge that gap. And they are the kind of scores that you would need if you're interested in going through the foundation program. Similarly, we have certain entry requirements for our undergraduate programs. Um, not only, uh, um, you can see some of the most popular requirements there, the international back, for example, you need three subjects at grade five at higher level and three subjects at grade four at higher level. Um, in addition to that, certain programs have certain requirements. So for example, if you're interested in studying science, it would be a good idea um, to have at least one science subject within that and to have higher level maths within that as well. So um, if you're interested in studying any subject specifically, I suggest you look at their entry requirements and see if, if, if there's anything you need um, in addition to that. Finally, if you're interested in studying postgrad, um, what we say is you need a two one degree or a GPA of 3.2 out of four to get into one of our programs. Um, some courses may require additional testing. So there might be an interview, and there might be a, 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 an additional assessment schedule, depending on the program itself. And they also have a specific um, a subject requirement. So for example, if you were interested in studying our energy science program, you would need to have a science or engineering degree background. Or if you were interested in studying our quantum science and tech program, you would need a physics, maths, computer science, or engineering degree background. So they're just some of the, some of the options. Um, we do need a bachelor's degree from one of the universities mentioned above, or if we're also really interested in speaking with students that have a master's degree from another university in, in the Philippines. So you can see it's quite broad. And then our English scores are all listed here. You can see that we take quite a variety of, of test results um, uh, for, for our programs. So you can, we'll send you on the slides afterwards so you can see exactly um, the different areas that we work. If you're interested in coming to Trinity, you can register your interest on our website in a specific program or and a specific year of entry. And I really suggest doing that because once you do that, you can stay up to date by, um, by email with all of the different announcements that are going on, when programs open, what's happening with campus. And you really get a great idea of what else is going on at Trinity. We just focused on science today. Um, but also all those elements of student life, and all, um, which are really important to a university experience. So if you can go to this address, so TCD Study International, you can get our register your interest form through that. Finally, I just want to thank you all for coming, especially for bearing with me when we had that small internet problem. Um, and I, I, myself and my colleague, Heikel, is uh, are both available if you have any questions about coming to the eternity we would be delighted to answer them.